Okay. We, we come back to, to the Bibera conjecture. Yesterday, I, I gave you the, one of the proofs of the, the, the first step of the entire story about this, this uh, um, uh, attempt of estimating the moduli of the coefficients of a univalent function in the unit disk, normalized univalent function. So, Bieberbach used another approach, but then I, I can show you that, in fact, with some extra tools we have now, it is quite simple to have the Bieberbach theorem. But then, Bieberbach conjecture is not easy to prove in general. When I was a student, so I was your age, it was debated if it could be possible to find <laughs> or not a general solution. So there were some schools um, who considered the, the Bieber conjecture fake, false. So in, in, uh, in, uh, in a sense, the, they were trying to find a counterexample. Even though there were some evidence that for classes, this is true. So, <clears throat> as I said, the, the, the Bibaba conjecture was proved in the 80s. And I recall here what I said yesterday, that uh, the main uh, uh, say a set is star-like with respect to a point. If whenever you have another point, you have also the segment connecting these two points. And it is convex if it is star-like with respect to each of its points, right? Now, the functions are, so in this class of uh, functions, that is the function which are univalent, holomorphic, so the finite unit disk and also normalized, okay? So we start with this class. If the image, so the, the range of this is a set with this geometric properties, like Convexity for the, the for the range implies that the function is convex, okay? and similarly, it is star-like. If the image of the disk is star-like with respect to the origin. All right. So this is the standard notation. So C calligraphic C is convex. Uh, S star because both the star is star-like. And S is simply the class of uh, normalized univalent function in unit disk. Um, well, this is, of course, uh, true inclusion because, uh, for instance, the cubic function is an example of a star like but not a convex function. So we have functions which are here but not here, right? And we have functions which are not even star like. Right? Um, then we. I, if I remember well, I introduced also the class P of functions take the values in the right hand plane. So such that re, the real part is positive, and it is normalized with this assumption that the phi of zero is one. And then there is uh, this uh, uh, these estimates, these uniform estimates for the coefficient of a function in this class P. Class P is also known as class of Karatodori function. When I say Karatodori function, I mean a function univalent from the unit disk into the right half plane such that phi of zero is one, normalized like this. And, sorry, besides uh, all these calculations, I want to, okay, to point out that what we have as extremal function so that you cannot have uh, um, better estimates for the coefficient is, a, is simply the function we use to prove that the disk is bilomorphic to the right half plane. Okay, so in fact the coefficients are all equal to two, right? Are all real equal to two, so the modulus is two. Not not being so the, the inequality cannot be improved. Okay, so now some kind of realization. This is. Uh, Interesting. So you, you take uh, a function, not necessarily, not even necessarily univalent, but only holomorphic, fixing all the origin and having the derivative at zero equal to one. So this function, of course, is not mapping the disk into itself. Otherwise, it would be obviously a rotation, right? And not just one rotation, but 
the identity because of the Schwarz lemma, right? We have that f of 0 is 0, f prime of 0 is modulus 1, so it is a rotation, but that in particular f prime of 0 is 1, so the coefficient is equal to 1, so f of z is z. So in general, this function is supposed to map the unit disk into c, otherwise the class of the self maps is very, is very small, just one. So we can prove that f is starlight if and only if this function here, which is well defined as we will see, is holomorphic and the real part of f is positive. Oh, sorry, oh, the real part of this, capital F, is positive. And again, another characterization for convex function is the following. You take this new function here, which is 1 plus z f second derivative okay, of f over f prime. So it is some sense of a higher order as a condition, okay? It's with real part positive. And this is, well, uh, an uh, intermediate result due to Alexander, uh, say, a century ago, and it in the same time by uh, the Bieberbach, pioneeristic works on, uh, on these functions. So the function which is holomorphic and normalized as usual, then is convex if and only if z f prime of z is star-like. This is another case. So, so the three classes are, uh, uh, there are relationships in, in the description of the classes p, c, and s star. So in short, I want to show you how these ideas can, can be obtained. Okay. So we start from a star-like function, f. So it means that whenever you have a point, uh, along the segment connecting f of z to 0, so t here is a parameter from 0 to 1. So it is, look at this left. Uh, um, left hand side of this equality. Okay, I take f of z. So I know that f of 0 is mapping to 0, right? Then I take f of z, another point. In order to prove that the range, so the domain f of delta, is star like, that is to say that f is star like as a function, I have to prove that whenever I take f of z, the entire segment is in f of delta, which means that when T varies between 0 and 1, there should exist a point here, right, such that this is, this is the case, right? Now, this function here is a function from the unit disk into itself. And clearly, since f of 0 is 0, I have that w of 0 is 0. Because on the left hand side here I have 0, and here I have 0, and I have 0, f of 0 is 0, right? And this is injective, remember that you are dealing with injective function. So from the Schwarz lemma, w of z has a module which is smaller or equal to z, modulus of z. What uh, we do have is something not very much known in, in literature. So it is considered like a Stupid lemma, uh, second, second, uh, 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 it's considered not a, a basic result. It is inst instead a very important fact. You take a circle inside the unit disk, okay? So you take this R to be strictly smaller than one. And this is mapped into a curve without self intersections. And this CR bounds a star like domain. Because we are taking, you see here, this property. As z varies in the circle, this varies in a curve. But because of this property, this is true for any radius r. But what, uh, what uh, is the analytic interpretation of the 
star likeness. The arc of f of z, that is the angle between f of z and the real axis, positive real axis, has to increase as z moves along this curve in anti-clockwise. So anti right? It cannot decrease. Why? Because if it, sorry, assume by contradiction that you have a function which has an angle, so the image of, this is, this is the, okay, yeah, this is the real axis, and this is the arc of f of z, right? So the, maybe it moves like this, but the angle which measure, okay, the arc of f of z has to increase because otherwise, the contour would have uh, would come back and forth in some sense, okay? So that you would av avoid a valley here, right? It cannot intersect. It's uh, so the contour cannot intersect it, the, the contour itself. So if if the arc first increases, then decreases, and then increases again then you would have some curve here, part of the curve, and two points here could not be joined to the origin. All right? So this is interpretation. This is a good idea to use to have, to have a geometric characterization. In fact, the fact that arg of f of z increases along their circle in the positive direction. So for you here, OK? I move like this, the circle, and the image is something which is, but the arc increases as z moves. So it means, oops, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Wrong. Wow. So here we are. It means that analytically you have this. This function here is a real value function, right? So the derivative, it is increasing, right? So the derivative with respect to the angle as z varies between 0 and 2 pi in positive direction has to be non-negative, all right? This is the condition. Now, the function is restricted along the circle of radius r, where r is, where r is smaller than 1, and theta varies between 0 and 2 pi. Good. So we can actually write the arc in this way. You use the fact that, remember, that the logarithm of something as the imaginary part, which is exactly the arc, right? So because of this fact, that this arc here can be written as image of logarithm of f of r e i theta, you have this equality. Now, you calculate this derivative, which is here, right? And, well, this derivative is, is nice to, to observe. Well, this is precisely this, well, first, let us consider the fact that we have the imaginary part of a function to be derivated. Huh? And this is exactly the derivative of the function, and then you take the imaginary part, right? This is the first step. Second step here, you have the logarithm of a function along a circle. Then the chain rule applies, right? So I have an imaginary part, and then this is what? This is the derivative of this function here, you see? Chain rule. So 1 over f, f prime, and then the derivative of this function here, which is i r e i theta. But the imaginary part of this, you see, this is, in fact, this is z r e i theta. Okay, it is i z f prime of z over f of z. Well, this is i with times something, right, which has a real and imaginary part. Since it has a, there is this i in front, well, the imaginary part of this is the real part of this without i, right? <laughs> okay. 
Okay. So, what does it mean that if you want to have this increasing property of the arg of the image, so this number is positive, then this function here, z f prime of f of z, as real part positive, or z f prime of f of z, is in the Karatodori class. Remember, this was what we have to prove, okay? If and only if this is the case. Well, similarly, you can repeat uh, the argument for convexity, but this time, what is the geometrical condition we are considering? Okay. Well, you can. Convexity is is uh, uh, more complicated request compared to star likeness. So. I have the circle I start from. I take the image of this circle. What I cannot have is that the image of this circle is a contour with some, if, if it is not increasing the arc, it is not even star-like. So we have to, to, to require at least this, because convexity is star-likeness uh, with respect to any point. But what you can have is that, as I said yesterday, you can have a contour like this, a star, uh, which is, in fact, star-likeness, which is star-like but not convex. Mm -hmm. So what I don't want to have is this kind of behavior along the contour. And I have to check that the slope okay, of the tangent is non-decreasing, because if it decreases, and increases again, it decreases, you have this kind of contour, which is not good. So it is more complicated, since you are taking the derivative, so the, 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 the slope okay, of the tangent, you are taking a second, second order condition, as we'll see. Because we take the, this number here, but of the derivative is positive, see? The incre so it means that as is, Theta varies, the derivative as an arg which is increasing, non decreasing. That's that, therefore, from here you take derivative, first derivative of the function involved here, and from this derivation here you obtain something which, which requires a second derivation. So if you make all the calculation and complete the proof, or you look at the book, <laughs> this is the condition which comes out from this. Make the calculation as before, repeat the similar argument, obtain real part, imaginary part, then you obtain the imaginary part of the logarithm of f of blah, 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 and this is what you finally obtain. Now, as an idea for the proof of Alexander, let me show you this. So you take this function here, g of z, z f prime of z, and consider this function here. Well, it is readily seen that you take this ratio, which is this, and so since g is z f prime, g prime involves also the second derivative of f, right? And from this obvious equality, this is an application of the definition. Well, you see that the two functions, which are the two, sorry, the two the two ratios involved in the definition come out. So this is positive, the real part of this is positive if and only if the real part of this is positive, right? So, Alexander's theorem tells us exactly this. F is convex if and only if this, which was called G, is star-like. G is star-like if and only if the real part of this is positive, but because of this, uh, of, of this equality, I have that the real part of this is positive. As you said, the function f is convex. That's the proof here. 
So, convexity can be uh, expressed in terms of second derivative of the function or in terms of star likeness of this auxiliary function. Okay? Now, we have some consequences um, in, the, in the investigation of the Biberbach conjecture. Because of the estimates we have, if we start from a star like function, then we have, well, this is, of course, a particular function which is in S. So this is the power expansion of zero, right? So z plus a2, z2, z2 to the square, blah, blah, blah. I write this. I write the, the function z f prime of z over f of z, which, as you can see, is well defined. You might wonder whether this is a meromorphic function or holomorphic. This is holomorphic, right? Because f of 0 is probably to 0. OK. So for several reasons, this is OK. And furthermore, I know that this function here is with real part positive. Because I'm assuming that f is star-like. This is to say this function here is Karatodori. But for Karatodori function, I have also this estimates of the coefficients. So now the game is transfer the information on the estimates of this coefficients here onto the coefficients here. If I can do this, I have the estimates I need. What is z f prime of z in terms of derivative? Well, f prime of z is 1 plus a2, 2 a2 2 z, right? Plus 3 a3 3 z squared, plus blah. Then I multiply everything times z, right? So I have z plus 2a2z two squared plus n a n z to the power n. So I have this power expansion, right? So normally I reduce so by 1 the exponent, but I multiply by z here. So these are the coefficients explicitly written in terms of aj's here, right? Then I write, you see, this is the fundamental trick in mathematics. You divide and multiply by the same amount, which is <laughs> in such a way that this function here turns out to be Karatodori, and this is the starting f. So we have this quotient here times this. And this is the power expansion of z f prime of z over f of z, and this is the power expansion of f, right? When I multiply power expansion we're in a commutative setting, well, we have that this is a power series expansion as well, where the coefficients s n are obtained in this way. So we take a n plus the first of this time a n minus 1 plus c n minus 1, OK? So then we have c2 plus c2 times a n minus 2 plus blah, blah, blah. Okay, and then a1 is, of course, 1. That's why here you don't have a1. But then, you look, you have two power expansions. And here you have qualities. That is to say, the coefficient of the same power of z has to be the same, right? In particular, sn has to be n a n. Because two power expansions are the same if and only if they have the same coefficient. It's like the generalization of the identity principle for polynomials, if and only if they have the same, OK? But we have a, an explicit expression of the Sn's coefficients here, and An is not known. But what I know is that, well, Nan is Sn. And from here, I obtain this. Look, I equate Nan. I move a n on, on the left hand side. Are you with me? And then I have obtained n minus 1 times a n. Now forget for a, for a while this modulus. Okay? So as I said, s n has to be equal to n a n once more. So from this fact, only a n on the right hand side is not obtained as a multiplication of some coefficient of cj. 
of this power expansion, right? So I have a n is n minus one, sorry, n minus n a n minus a n, so this is n minus one, is this c one a n minus one plus c two a n minus two plus 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 plus. When I consider the uh, moduli, the left hand side is uh, like the right hand side, right? I have this. As this this equality, the modulus of n minus one a n, that is n minus one modulus a n, is the modulus of this part here. Then I use the triangle inequality and the fact that all the cj's here in modulus are smaller or equal to two because the function, this function here, is Caratodori. Right, so I collect two in front in this estimate, and I have the sum of the a j's with j smaller than n. And the last one is one, right? Because it is a one. All right. Now, what can we do for n equal to two? In particular, we obtain 2 minus 1, 1, a2 is 2 times a1, modulus of a1, which is 1, right? So we have this. So the Bibberg theorem is again obtained. But for this smaller class, what I want to obtain is that by induction on n, I can prove that each a n has modulus smaller or equal to n for function in the class a star. So for star-like functions, we can prove Bibelbach the conjecture. No, we can prove the theorem. Okay. And let us check for three. We have three minus one, which is two, right? A three is smaller or equal to modulus of a two plus one, right? But two is smaller or equal to 2. Sorry, a2 in modulus is smaller or equal to 2. That is to say, this number is smaller or equal to 6. Or 2 modulus of a3 is smaller or equal to 6. That is to say, a3 in modulus is smaller or equal to 2. Now, assume that this is true for any k between 1 and m, as I said, by induction, right? Now, from this, Simply reported the, the same, the same uh, uh, estimate we already used. We have that m m plus one. Right? Well, I consider m plus one, right? It is by induction on m. So I assume that the, 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 the statement is true for any k from one to m. So I prove this true for one, two, and three, right? And now I want to obtain this the the, the statement for the coefficient m plus 1. So m plus 1 here means m, m plus 1. This is smaller or equal to 2. And then I have what? This is a m minus, sorry, this is a m, right? In here. And this, in this game. Remember that n is now m plus 1. So I have modulus of a m plus modulus of a m minus 1 plus modulus of a, m minus 2, and so on and so forth. And by assumption, each of them, so each of the a, m's has modulus smaller or equal to m. So I have smaller or equal to 2 m plus m minus 1 plus m minus 2 plus blah, 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 plus 2 plus 1. And this is the sum of the first m integers, right? So this is quite an easy uh, exercise to have. This is 2 times m plus 1 plus times m over 2. So it is m over, sorry, m times m plus 1, right? But m is here, so we have this. Quite a simple proof. So for star-like functions, we have actually proved that it is uh, as conjectured by Biberbach. So the nth coefficient, this is true for any n, okay, because we are using induction. So the nth coefficient of a uh, star-like function normalizing uh, is has modulus smaller or equal to m. Here are some references 
for those of you who are can be interesting interested in this stuff. In particular, the, the, the famous book by Duran was written before the branch proofs over there. So that you can see in some chapters, some attempts, some other, well, there are books so thick about this, this subject. I'm not saying that, well, we have the complete survey of the, of the topic. However, it is nice to have a comparison. Well, well this is also very old, conformal mapping. So this is before the, the branch. There. So there, there are some more recent books. We have another approach because most of the attempts which were considered promising, now they are considered not promising at all. Because now we have the final result. Okay. So first, thank you for this. And now let me check if I can. So this is, as I said, this is nothing more. But I wanted to, sh to give you <coughs> the idea that the simple tools we have are extremely powerful if used with some, uh, some knowledge and uh, accuracy. Now. Uh, let me switch into another subject, which is more abstract. So there, are, there will be no proofs about these facts. And I will, all right, let me check. Uh, uh, pa -pa -pa -pa. Covering, right? So, for the next topic in complex analysis, I will need some topological backgrounds in covering. We have already encountered some topological instruments or characterization of uh, domains or something else which have influences in complex analysis. For instance, the existence of a logarithm is granted as soon as you have a non-vanishing of a logarithm of a function, you have a non-vanishing function on a simply connected domain. The Riemann mapping theory, which is somehow the peak of a one, co one course in one complex variable, is valid only for simply connected domains. Uh, there are other restrictions uh, in uh, other restrictions, other geometric conditions which can be better rephrased in terms of topology. So what I need now is the notion of, of a covering space. So we start from basic topology. And so the function involved in this, uh, in this part, in this, uh, in this part, in this, um, uh, in this topic uh, are essentially functions which are continuous. And only in special cases we will see the function will become holomorphic, right? So for the time being, we restrict our point of view from, uh, to the topological point of view. Right? So let me give the very basic definition. You start from a topological space X. You consider another space X tilde. And a continuous function P, which turns out to be also subjective. So for instance, you can take x and x and take p the identity. You have an, for sure, this function is a subjective continuous function. But furthermore, we consider p to have this property. You take any point in x, and for any point that exists a neighborhood, open neighborhood, u, such that the inverse image of U with respect to P is a union of disjoint open sets in X tilde. And each open set in X tilde, so when you restrict to one of these disjoint open sets, the function P, P turns out to be a homomorphism. Okay, so P is not a, a global homomorphism, but locally at any of such neighborhoods. It is a homomorphism. So for instance, well, the example of the identity works fine. So any, any, any space can be covered, all right, 
by itself using the identifier. This doesn't give any extra information, OK? Some terminology. The map P is called the covering map or projection, right? The space X is often referred as the base space, because this is the image. You have something here, and you consider something up okay, this space, and then you project on the space, right? And the total space, X tilde, is what will play the important role in the covering, together with P, of course, right? So let me make you some example. Probably you know, already know this. Oh, first, yeah. In many, many textbooks, you find extra conditions on the space X. I only assume that X is a topological space, which is, of course, unavoidable if I want a continuous function, right? <laughs> I have to know what continuous function means. Huh? However, most of the results are valid only if the function, if, sorry, if the, um, the base space is path connected, locally path connected or something like this. So in some books, you find this uh, assumptions for each proposition. In others, the, the, the assumptions are uh, already condensed and uh, used in the definition of covering. So in, since essentially um, no theorems can no theorem can be proved without this weak uh, connectivity conditions, some authors decided to add the condition directly in the definition. So for most of the, 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 the textbooks, the condition of locally path connectedness is assumed in the definition. This is just okay in case you, you find a different definition. Well, the very simple example, but the toy, toy example, which always is uh, useful to know, okay? You start from the unit circle, S1, in R2. Well, you can cover S1 with S1 itself by using the identity, but this is so the trigger covering. As well. But you can also consider the function P from R to S1, which maps the point t, so the real number t, into the pair, cos t sin, sin, uh, sin t, which of course lies on S1. And this gives you an infinite covering, as we say, right? So if you move along the real axis, you go around S1 infinitely many times because of the periodicity of cos and C. Another example is the following, non-trivial example. So take the complex plane with the, uh, well, it is like R2 minus one point. So for instance, the origin. Hmm? The fact that it is the origin is not essential, but it makes all calculation easier. I take as a function, not the identity from C, minus the origin into C minus the origin, but the nth power of Z. Okay, so now each point has a neighborhood such that the inverse image is only N, right? This joint open sets where QN turns out to be a homomorphism. In the previous example, you take a point on S1 and, and, you, and you obtain infinitely in the neighborhood of it, and you obtain infinitely many intervals in R, so, uh, because of the periodicity. But here you obtain exactly n inverse image of one point Z naught, right? You start from a point of the disk, of the, sorry, of the, um, the puncture plane, and there are only n inverse images. Because you have a polynomial of degree n in C, hmm? and you have n roots. Okay. Here are some of the properties of what are normally called the fibers. So p minus one of u hmm, is called a sheet. 
So the number of sheets is what characterizes the fibers. And this number is independent, is a discrete, well, first of all, the fiber over a point is a discrete subset of its tilde. So the fiber is the inverse image, it cannot be a continuous. And the fibers are, well, as you see, as you see, on every connected component, the, fib the fibers are homeomorphic. And if X is path connected, so if the base point is path connected, this discrete space is the same for each for each uh, x, so this is to say the fiber is homeomorphic one to the other. So they have the same number of sheets and they are homeomorphic in this sense. Well, the full pre-image is then homeomorphic to u times, well, if you don't consider the point-wise effect, but locally you obtain this. So the cardinality of the fiber is equal to the cardinality of f, right? And this is called the degree of the cover and represents the number of sheets. So in the, pre the previous example, if you have the same base point, base space, sorry, and the same total space, for instance, the, case, the second example I gave you before, it depends on the function qn, the number of fibers, the number of the, the cardinality of the fiber or the degree of the cover. Okay, it's not something which only depends on the space, but depends on the space and on the and on the uh, on the function. S yes, well, there are several uh, ways to say the, the the same fact. So the degree, or the number of sheets, or the unfolding covering number, okay, uh, uh, are introduced uh, for several, uh, um, from, say, you can see the covering in different ways, but you essentially have to know that, that what you are counting is the number of inverse image of, of one point, which uh, with some path connected uh, hypothesis is the same. And in this case, in some books you find that, well, this is the degree of the cover. In other books you say, well, this means that the covering covers is an end, end full covering of the base point and so on and so forth. But in the sense, well, this is a triple cover, the, the, mm, this is a double cover for, well, so you find uh, examples of double covering using, for instance, Q2, as we did of the plane minus the point and nth covering in general. Now, what is also interesting to know is whether it is possible to, okay, have, get information from the base point so you can lift information from the base point onto the total space using the point, right? Uh, so, since on the base point, in uh, algebraic topology, what you start doing is to, to study path and then loops in order to define fundamental groups, right? Then a multiple and so on and so forth. It is natural to think of what is over the path to be another path in X tilde. Or is there always the case that starting from a path in X, there exists a path in X tilde such that the projection of this path in X tilde is the path in, in X. Well, the answer, the answer is, well, if you start from a path, this is a continuous bank from an, an interval into X, there exists a unique path with the additional uh, hypothesis, well, lifting path, that is to say that when it is projected as a path from X tilde, it becomes the path in X. But you have to add one initial condition because 
imagine in the general setting, you can have several levels of the inverse image, right? So there are several possibilities, several choices of the same, of, of a possible lifting. But whenever you choose one, since these are disjoint, right, there is only one. And this is a proposition which uh, is some sense, in some sense is the, the first step in the description of all lifting. These are called lifting properties. In the, in the, the curve gamma is called the lift of the curve, so capital gamma of the curve gamma. As you can see, if x and y are two points in the base space, in the base space x, and then if you assume that x is path connected, you can join these two points by a curve, by a path, right? Then you go to fibers and you obtain one lifting starting from one point of the first fiber into the other fiber, right? Because we have to, to, to consider this as, a, as the condition for the lifting such a way that when you project, the starting point of the lifting has to be, the, say, the point x, and the, stand, the ending point of the lifted uh, path has to be the end point of the code. But there are several ways to do this, because each time I can choose a different point in the fiber of x, right? And this, uh, this possibility of lifting with different initial points, different ways, gives you, in fact, the bijection between the points of fibers, which are looking, we were looking for. So in this way, you can easily see that I don't want to prove anything, as I said. I promise you, I don't want to prove anything. But by using this lifting properties of the, of the path, you can easily see that fibers are, uh, in fact, have the same coordinates, so they are in one-to-one -one correspondence. Okay, I guess that all of you have already seen the, um, the notion of, of, of homotopy, that, so that I, I simply collected to summarize the, 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 the basic fact I, I, I'm going to use in this proposition. So you start from a topological space. Here, nothing is related to, to coverings, but you take point x naught as a base point, and you consider this. The, the, the set of all loops starting, so closed path starting at x naught and ending at x naught, continuous path, right? And then you can deform one into the other using the homotopy. And you say the two paths are equivalent if there exists a homotopy that is a function, okay, con uh, say yes, continuous deformation of one into the other loop. So first loop to the other loop. Okay. So the set of all these classes is a set, right? But then on loops of bay points x naught, you can also introduce a composition. You start from a path, then you have another path, and you say, okay, the just the position of two paths is one path. Okay, so you move on one and the other, and it is a closed path again, okay? Well, this definition is good in a sense that when you pass through the classes, this is preserved. Classes of homotopy. And the set of classes together with induced operation of just a position on classes, so it depends only on the representative in the homotopy classes instead of a loop, okay? is a group. This was introduced by Poincaré. I guess that this should be known. But however, this is called the fundamental group of X and gives you very many information about the topology and so provides you the tools to classify topological spaces. So these are preserved by homeomorphism and so on and so forth. And, the, the, and they are denoted by P1, X, X naught because starting from P1, then you have also P2 P and Pn. So in general, uh, even though you can define also the nth homotopy group, it's not obvious at all to calculate them. 
there are some open questions also for spheres. The Pn of Sk is not known in all possible choices of n and k. And what is surprising also is that you can have Pn of Sk. Sk is the kth sphere in, uh, in uh, Rk plus 1, right? The unit sphere. Well, not necessarily Pn of Sk is 0, so it is trivial. 0 in the sense of a group, OK? It's a trivial group when n is greater than k. If some of you have some knowledge in, uh, in homology, well, homolo homology groups which are related to, uh, in particular, the, the first homology group is very much related to the fundamental group. But for homology groups, you know that if you are asking for some homology group of a set which lives in uh, Rn, okay, and you ask for uh, Hn plus 1 of uh, something which lives in Rn, this is definitely trivial. So there are some differences between homology and homotopy groups. The relation, if you, if you are interested in this, is that this group here is not necessarily abelian. It cannot be in general abelian. There are examples of non-abelian groups. Uh, on the other hand, the first homology group is always abelian and is in fact a, um, it can be obtained from this non-commutative group as the abelianization, you see this in English, <laughs> of the non-commutative abelian, the non-commutative uh, fundamental group. So, for instance, quite easily, take this simple S1, mm, and you can see that any loop mm, of a certain point in S1 is somehow a multiple of a basic loop. Mm. You cannot have many, very many other loops, OK? Just a multiple of one okay, loop. So one sense, the inverse sense, the inverse sense, and so on. But this are the fundamental group is like Z, so uh, isomorphic to Z, because it, this is the group associated to, to each loop, uh, to each class of, of uh, loops. You can associate the number of times you are going around the zero in positive directions or in negative directions. But if you take two circles and you make this eighth figure, you can have one generator in one circle, one generator in another circle, and these are independent, so that you can have loops which are like this. And so you have two generators, and the fundamental group is what is known as Z, free group Z, so the free product, right, of two groups. And the free product is not necessarily, generally it's not, commutative. Whereas, if you calculate the homology group of the eight figure, you obtain that this is the direct sum of z with z, which is commutative. Okay, this is if you want the relation, which is important to know, but not not in, in our setting. So I wanted to give you one uh, well d condition. There is only one condition in order to generalize the situation of lifting path. So in general, instead of starting from a function from an open interval of a closed interval of R into X, into the base point, I might start from a function which is continuous from a topological space Z into X. And I wonder whether you can always take, they can always um, lift F to a function from Z to X tilde in such a way that this condition is true. So you see this generalizes the previous one. I'm looking for a continuous function from z to x tilde. x tilde is the covering of x. 
P is the projection or the covering map. And I want that the function which acts here from Z into X is lifted to a function from the same Z starting the topological space into, a <coughs> into the covering in such a way the diagrams commute so that P composed to F tilde is F. And this is not always the case, unfortunately. So for, for path, it works fine. But in general, it is a very algebraic condition, if you want. So you take the F star, which is the induced homomorphism on, on at the level of uh, fundamental group. So this is the fundamental group of Z. And this is the fundamental group of X. And this, well, this is the fundamental group of X tilde. And this is the same. So you take what is denoted here by F star of P1 of Z, and one that this is a subgroup of P star of P1 of X tilde. Okay? So actually, this is a if and only if. So this geometric property of lifting a function, if you want, which is geometric for, for the case of of uh, path, it is very geometric. So you want a curve to have another curve which can be projected over the curve we are starting, we are starting from. And becomes, uh, in general, um, an algebraic problem. So if this group inclusion is true, then the lifting, the lift is, is possible, otherwise not. So there are examples where you cannot lift a function. For instance, assume that the, this is the P1 of the covering is trivial, which means that X tilde is simply connected. So this projection here, since P star is homomorphism, cannot be anything else but the trivial subgroup. And assume that this space here is not simply connected, but can have very odd fundamental group. And if this is preserved and not mapped into, into the, the trivial subgroup, this condition is not fulfilled, right? So in general, what I'm saying is that if this Z, of course, it depends also on F, right? But if this Z has a complicated fundamental group and X tilde, it's very simple from the point of view of the homotopy groups, then this condition can, be, can become difficult to find, to be fulfilled, right? Um, another, well, algebraic characterization of, in terms of covering. So the number of uh, elements in any fiber is the index of this subgroup in this group. Okay. Now, let me uh, take this. As I said, P1 of X is not necessarily billion. So that this group is not necessarily normal. This is a subgroup of this, but this is not necessarily normal. A covering is called regular if the subgroup, the P star of the fundamental group of the covering is normal in P1. In particular, if X, as I said before, if X tilde is simply connected, then this P1 is trivial, and then, well, the covering is, of course, regular, right? Because P star is a homomorphism of group and maps the trivial subgroup into the trivial subgroup, right? Cannot be different. Hmm? And in this particular case, we have that, well, this covering is not only regular, but it's called universal. So the universal covering is covering, a, a universal covering is a covering whose total space is simply connected. So once again, simply connected is, appears uh, as a special case. In the previous example, 
in the only examples we gave, I gave you, we had a, a covering of S1 realized by the map T into cos T sin T. R is simply connected. This is an example of a, of a universal covering. On the other hand, when I remove the origin from the complex plane, I obtain a non-simply connected domain. And the other example, so the plane minus one point covered by the plane minus one point and the function z goes into z to the power n is not a universal covering. Okay? So in few slides you will see why universal covering will play an important role and also regular subgroups in regular covering, sorry, will be very, very uh, important. When you have two coverings, say so you start from a uh, covering of x, then you have a function from x into y, then you have a covering of y. Hmm? So you have x tilde, x, y tilde, y, and then you have a diagram, you know, two projections and a function. So you ask whether it is possible to consider a function between the total spaces continuing in such a way that diagram commutes. And if this is the case, this is as the called the associated covering function. And as we will see, this will be used several times and some consideration from Riemann surfaces. This is not assumed that the function, the uh, covering function exists given a function, okay? It depends if the function maps fibers into fibers or say points related which are, but in any case, just it's, it's important to know that there, there can uh, uh, there can be important, and a special case, if you want, we have the notion of deck transformation or covering transformation or automorphism of a cover. So there are several ways to indicate the same stuff. So you start from covering x tilde p of x, and then you look for function from x tilde into itself, homeomorphism. So continuous with events continuous. And such that P composed to, to phi is P. So imagine that here you have a diagram with the two projections. Okay. X tilde P, X tilde P, and here you have the identity if you want, right? So F tilde, uh, sorry, F tilde F is, sorry, phi is one, the covering associated to the identity, if you want. It can be seen like this in, in the previous case. Or it can be also considered as the lifting of the projection of the covering uh, function. Some basic facts. The set of all these transformations, okay, together with the composition, so we have invertible functions or continues with the inverse continuous. So of course, the identity is always a possibility. Take the identity and you obtain a, a deck transformation. This, these deck transformations are important because they form a group under composition, standard composition of functions. And this group is called the deck transformation group. Hmm? And indicated by the how normally how p, but this is not a standard notation. Okay, what is important to know is and observe that it, when you have two function with this property and you consider their composition, you can compose them because they are continuous from x tilde to x tilde, right? So you take another psi. Well, because both are deck transformation, also the composition is a deck transformation. It is easily same, right? What is the property in this uh, geometric property related to this property, to this condition here? Well, phi maps a point of the total space into another point, but the image of a point on a fiber has to be in the same fiber. Otherwise, this is not true, right? Take z. 
phi of z is mapped, is projected into a point, but also p of z is projected to the same point because of this relation. So, what is the action of the transformation, that transformation? It permutes the elements of each fiber. And, well, this defines a group action, which is, okay, related to the automorphism group. And what is also interesting to observe is that if you, are, if you interpret this condition as lifting property of uh, the projection, then none of the deck transformation but the identity can have a fixed point. Why? Because, as I said, lifting, prop lifting property, uh, well, it's clearly fulfilled here, no problem, because, well, you have the P star of X tilde is containing P star of X tilde, so it's the same. Good. So you can lift P star, P, into a function F, phi, right? In particular, the, phi, the, 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 the lifted function is not uniquely determined unless you fix one value. Right? As I said, depends on the, the, the starting point, say, of this function. So if you assume by contradiction that there is a phi in the deck transformation group fixing a point, then necessarily it is the identity. Because the identity is also a lifting of P, and it is the one which fixes the point. Since there cannot be two lifting with the same starting point, and the identity is for sure one of this, the other has to be the identity. So, and this is probably what summarizes the importance of deck transformations and the other stuff. So, this group here is isomorphic to the quotient group of fundamental group of X over the normalized of P star, of the subgroup P star P1 of X tilde, X naught tilde. Okay, this is in general a subgroup which is not normal. You know, I, cannot, I cannot consider the quotient of a group with a subgroup. So this, this explains why regular coverings are very much appreciated because in this case, you start from a regular covering, the P star of P1 X tilde X not tilde is normal. So you don't have to consider a normalizer, and you can consider this quotient. And this is a subgroup, which is isomorphic to out P. In many cases, well, it seems strange, but it can be the it can be a way to calculate this. So in some case, for instance, for the calculus of the um, one possibility is to calculate the fundamental group of the projective, uh, projective space, uh, knowing that the only automorphisms are the identity and the ant antipodal maps, which are acting on uh, on the double covering on the double covering of uh, of the projective space. So you obtain information the fundamental group of this base point, base, sorry, sorry, base space by knowing, by describing the, uh, the deck transformations group. But here is what is more, very much, uh, what is the best you can have. Assume that you are considering a universal covering, which is in particular regular. So this is definitely trivial. Not not even regular, even more trivial, because this P1, so the fundamental group of X tilde of the total space, is trivial. Hmm? So any, which means that any loop can be deformed to the constant loop, right? This is the definition of simple connectors. So the class is reduced to points. Hmm? So when I take P star of, of trivial group, I have a trivial group, and then this quotient is ne necessarily P1 of X, X naught. So we have that for a universal covering of X, 
the deck transformation group is isomorphic to the fundamental group of the base part, base space, sorry. Okay. So, and this concludes the slides for today. Now, let us start from possible application to our setting. Right? Assume that you have domain something which can be covered by objects which lie in the Riemann surfaces. In sorry, in the Riemann sphere. Sorry, Riemann sphere. Okay. So you, your um, your freedom is to choose something which lives as a total space in the Riemann sphere as a as a topological space and then the final function uh, to cover domains or other objects in the complex sense. Mm -hmm. For instance, we have seen that the puncture plane can be covered by itself using several functions, right? And the puncture plane is a non simply connected subdomain of the Riemann sphere. However, what is important to, to know is that any uh, good object, topological, topologically good object, have uh, sorry has a, a universal covering. And so, in our setting, this means that we can refer to the possible choices of simply connected domains as covering of these objects, good topologically objects. What are the classes of simply connected domains which can play the role of total space in this game? Well, bounded simply connected domains are biomorphic to the disk. So I can consider simply the disk. Either the disk or the plane or the Riemann sphere itself. All right? That's why we have studied the automorphism then of this domains. We have studied the automorphism of the plane, of the Riemann sphere, and of the and of the unit disk. What are the characteristics of these three domains? They are all simply connected. They cannot be biolomorphically identified. There is no holomorphic function which is not constant from the plane into C into sorry into into the unit disk and similarly from the Riemann sphere into the unit disk and so on and so forth. But the Riemann sphere is also compact. So we have also another characteristic. So we have a simply connected compact total space and this is the only possibility, Riemann sphere or the plane unbounded or the disk. All right. So the next task is, next and final task is, can we describe the objects we can cover by this universal coverings a little more by studying the automorphism or by the action? Or precisely of these automorphisms on these total spaces. Indeed, this is what we will do, and we will describe all possible objects which are which can be covered by these three spaces in terms of uh, quotients of actions of subgroup of good subgroups of automorphisms. And we'll describe everything and we'll reobtain the results like Picard theorem and so on and so forth. Okay? Using this covering backgrounds. Um, well, I think that I can stop here today. And on, on the Monday I will complete with some more specific details about the quality of the object sorry, the, the request, topological request to of the objects uh, or the base points. To be covered by, to be covered by um, the disk, the plane, or the of the of the Riemann sphere. Okay, thank you. <laughs>